In true MIT form, I'm going to start with a quiz. It's a pop quiz for you all. So go ahead, Anne Sophie, thank you. Which of the following diseases claimed the most lives in 2002? A, HIV AIDS, B, tuberculosis, C, malaria, or D, cancer? <coughs> so the answer is D, cancer. In 2002, cancer claimed more lives than A, B, and C combined. Um, in 2020, 70% of these will be in the developing world. This is a huge, global, looming epidemic that's largely unappreciated, in my opinion. And we're going to need uh, new, affordable, workable solutions for this looming crisis. We're going to need technology, as Susan mentioned, but current technologies, both for diagnosis and therapy, are very expensive and very infrastructure intensive. They require hospital access and, and the access to sophisticated, right now, healthcare workers. So one idea that we've had is what if we turn the power of this miniaturization, which has driven the computer revolution, one transistor to 150 million, what if we turn this power of progress on cancer diagnosis and therapy? Um, so I'm going to give you some examples. <coughs> it's the challenge of 20 seconds. <laughs> Um, this is one example. So this is a $7,000 microscope that's used for analyzing pap smears for cervical cancer screening. And one of our alums, Rebecca Richards Cordum at Rice, has miniaturized this to a $10 part. This microscope is the size of a penny, can be put on the end of an instrument, which can be used to directly interrogate oral cancer or cervical cancer. This is something called paper diagnostics. This is a field where uh, this could be a urine detector for a cancer biomarker. This device is made out of paper, works like a pregnancy stick, and double-sided, microfabricated, adhesive, sticky tape. So it's an extraordinarily low, co low cost. So that's a window onto diagnosis. What about therapy? Currently, therapy is chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, requires access to hospitals. The economic side effects of these and the personal side effects of these are huge. Patients often cannot work or care for their families during the time of cancer therapy. And why is that? Because we know that chemotherapy is poison. Currently, with the current technologies, about 1% of the chemotherapy arrives at the tumor. So the thinking has been, and is, is still, that if we could focus this chemotherapy directly on the tumor, we could potentially reduce side effects, consolidate treatments, and reduce the impact of, of that on patients. So I'm going to tell you about nanotechnology. How small is nano in this uh, scheme? These are uh, individual fibers of spider silk. The nano devices I'm talking about need to be a thousand times more narrow than an individual piece of spider silk to get into the tumor. And this is how we envision that they would work. So this would be a nano device that would carry the chemotherapeutic payload directly to the tumor, would be injected here in a vein, it would escape the filtration organs of the liver and the spleen and arrive with its therapeutic payload directly at the tumor, carrying a large fraction of its payload right to that spot. So how far from reality is this? These are some that we call nanoworms. These are worm-like particles. They're made out of rust, iron oxide, and sugar, dextran. They're shaped like worms, and then they have these molecular zip codes on their surface that allow them to attach to the tumor in multiple places and release their chemotherapeutic payload right there. This is a version of these nanoparticles that we've made that would be responsive to a recurrent tumor. So let's say after you've delivered the chemotherapy, the tumor is coming back. These nanoparticles cluster together in response to enzymes that recurrent tumors make, and this gives a magnetic signature that we can sense remotely. This is a version of those same nanoparticles, which could then be remote triggered to release a different chemotherapeutic in response to that recurrence. Okay? So the idea is these nanoparticles are now sitting in the tumor. You can remotely trigger them to release a different drug. And eventually, we'd like these nanoparticles to integrate the diagnosis and therapy on a single particle. We have to deal in these technology designs with this global accessibility map. We know 2 billion people lack access to health care, 1 billion in remote regions, and 1 billion are slum dwellers that are in our cities. So we have to think about that in the design of these technologies. So this is your final question. What would it take to solve a global cancer epidemic in the new economy? A, political will. B, local health care workers. 
C, sustainable economic models, or D, new accessible technology. So we'll be talking about the answer to this, which I think is E at the board. Thank you. Great.